Hello and welcome to this, the third in the series of videos demonstrating how to use Card Studio. Uh, in this uh, video, we will open an existing card design. We will then make some changes to it. We'll change the background, reposition some of the text, uh, add in a barcode, and we'll then look at what happens when you print this card. So the first step is to open the existing card design. So we can either use the shortcut icon here or we could use file open. Test number two is the card design we're using. This is the one that we created in the last video. All the fields that we put on, so these three fixed fields, including the, the background image, are all locked in position along with the variable data. So what we want to do is unlock the background and change the image. So we're going to change it to uh, this version for a driver's license. The uh, aspect ratio was checked or keep the aspect ratio was checked and you can see it's kept with card size roughly the same. We could uh, probably zoom out a little or zoom in just a little bit, uh, reducing it in size, uh, maybe to, to that one that would do. And again, lock it in position. You can also see that the photo is now over or should be over on the right hand side. So the next thing then is to move the photo. So we unlock the photo move it into position and then again uh, resize it so it fits into the little blue box. Uh, what I may need to do is change or turn off the, the grid lines so I can actually get it to position inside the box uh, and then again lock it in place. What we are going to do is take these three fields uh, and reposition them again and uh, what I'm going to do is actually have the fixed fields now appearing underneath the photo and then the variable data would go out from the side. So uh, each one of them needs to be unlocked. And then I can reposition it. Again, lock it, leave it. I'll leave the, I won't lock them in place just yet. I need to get them all positioned uh, where I want them. Uh, and then we can look at locking them all in place. What I'll do is drop that. Um, what we'll do is just remove those characters from the uh, end of the string. I need to unlock that and move it out of the way so I can actually make a change in here. So I now have the three fields positioned, repositioned, and what I then need to do is reposition uh, each one of these. Put it there. And now what I'll probably do is turn the grid lines back on so that we can get them positioned uh, to the same place. And what I'll also do when I've done this uh, then is change the way the fields are printed so that they're now all aligned to the left, uh, to the right edge of the card. What I'll do then is add in uh, another field with the barcode information. So I'm going to take a linear barcode. Uh, I'm going to add in the card ID as the uh, value that will fill the, the barcode. And I'm going to change the card type as well, uh, the barcode type uh, code 128 auto. And what I'll do is just position it so that it doesn't obscure any of the other fields. So there is my new card design that I've changed. I'll just make sure that the data, the fields are locked in place. That's what I want. Position them. Again, making sure they're all uh, positioned as, as we want them and are locked. Uh, card number is going to run into the barcode. So I would reposition the, the barcode in just a moment. Pick the, the barcode. I will reposition it. 
But in actual fact, what I'll do is make it a smaller in size. That should be okay. Uh, so I will then lock that in place. So we now have all the the fields uh, on our new design locked in place. What we'll use now is the save as. So you'll save this as test three. So it does mean I still have the original design uh, and I could open that again if I wanted to. And you can see you can have multiple card designs open and they would appear in the uh, tabs across the top. And if there is a tab we or a design we've finished working with, provided we're happy with the way it appears and we've saved the design, we can then close it here. So with this design, what we want to see is what happens when we print. So under file uh, print, this is the printer that is set up. So this is basically the default printer at the moment for Card Studio. So I will click here and immediately you can see the uh, dynamic fields pop up. I'm now able to enter variable information, even though I'm using uh, the professional edition of Card Studio. I haven't gone through the stages in Print Studio of linking it with the database. Uh, but from here, from the design side, I can actually print out uh, a design, a card, and I can add in some variable uh, data. Uh, so we will put something in here. Uh, and then the card number. If we wanted to add in the photo, we would click the capture passport. There is no uh, a camera is not available at the moment, but I can pick from a, a photo. Uh, so these could be uh, for ID cards, photos that have already been provided and are stored or on a PC or on a system somewhere. So we can pick the one, select the one we want to use. Uh, and then if we click print, that card would now be printed out on the printer that we had uh, we have selected. So our default printer in this case is the ZC350. Here I am just going to click cancel. Uh, what I will do the other next stage is under the settings, I will turn off the single sided uh, and I will now add uh, uh, some information onto the back of the card. So I will now click show the back design and I'm just going to add in some text. Uh, and this would be uh, the uh, T's and C's for the, uh, the card use. Uh, and obviously underneath this, then well, there would be more information uh, that we could add in uh, if we needed to. So we could add in a time break and then just some So here we can see the text being wrapped around. Uh, what I can do is make the box uh, bigger. I can reposition it. I find it easier uh, to use the end type in the value uh, that I, I want for the field uh, to for the box to appear in, uh, and then set its size. So, uh, So there is my the, the box I want to put the text in and I could go back here and just uh, enter a larger text. Uh, this is useful that it, it, it's gone out, the text has gone outside the box so we can now see how these two work. The wrap text, so we can see how the text that was outside the box has now wrapped around. It does mean obviously that some of it is now going out the box, perhaps out the bottom of the box. Uh, and we can also see then with that one turned off, if we clip the text, and you can see how any text that is outside the box size that we've created is now cut off. Uh, so what we could do is simply reduce the uh, the size, 18, 
So something like that, text like that should fit. We could again just obviously center it in the uh, in the box that we've got, and now we have the the front and the back, and we could show the two together. So again, if I zoom out a little bit, we can see both the front and the back of the card, and we could toggle to front only or back only, depending on what it was we wanted to to look at. Again, there's no variable text on the back, so if I print the card design, I'm presented with the same fields. I can enter the first name the uh, last name, the card ID, and I can select or capture a new photo to use. Uh, obviously, because this card is unique to the person, I wouldn't change the number of copies here, but if we were producing uh, cards for um, an event, we could perhaps pre-print the cards and then just personalize them on the day. So I could print multiple copies of a design if I wanted to as well. Uh, I will here then click the uh, the save button so I save all the changes that I've made uh, and that then is the end of the third video uh, and thank you very much for taking the time to, to view and listen to it.